The education sector, no doubt, is one that holds the key to development and Nigeria's ability to compete in the global marketplace. However, this sector has over the years experienced the worst type of decline in relation to standards, quality and value. So, by the time we finish clearing the bush, and to redress this decline in a sector that is said to be critical to economic development. The 20th Nigeria Economic Summit focused on it with a theme, transforming education through partnerships for global competitiveness. This summit on education will achieve three things. The first is to draw everyone's attention to the fact that we do have a problem and to understand the nature of that problem. The second is to consider our capacity and ability to, have, to effect the necessary changes based on the magnitude of what needs to be done. And the third is to devise a structure that will ensure sustainability of an improving educational system. A recent survey on education and employability estimates that 24 million jobs are needed over the next 10 years to reduce the current unemployment level by half. In his speech, Transforming Education in Nigeria, Implications for the Future, the Minister of Education reeled out some of the ongoing transformation in the sector, as well as the challenges. The foreign challenges are the key challenges that keep recurring in the tertiary education. The gap between the extant progress of tertiary institutions and the requirements in the world of work. A planted academic calendar in tertiary institutions location, but in also strike actions by staff unions. Some tertiary institutions have not been able to fully assess the funds allocated to them through third fund due to their inability to meet the labor conditionalities. The present disparity in remuneration Placement and job mobility between polytechnic and university graduates brings a lot of conflict in the job market. He also suggested a possible way forward. There is need to close the existing gaps between the extant programs of the universities and the requirements in the industry by establishing closer relationships as well as forming synergies and partnerships in addressing the issues involved. The eclectic academic calendar in public tertiary institutions, occasion but industrial action by staff unions needs to be stabilized. The original intention for which post-UTME was set up should be strictly adhered to by all stakeholders. The spirit and ideas of universal autonomy as practiced in other clients should be adhered to by all stakeholders. The tactical institutions should strengthen their capacity to be able to meet up with the conditionality laid down for assessing force from third fund. And then the sessions began with a presidential policy dialogue designed to elicit ideas around the kind of education system Nigeria needs and lead a discussion on what Nigeria's ideal education system should be. The question of curriculum, which is misconceived. Curriculum is not a package, go and teach this. Curriculum has a context, then it has that package, then it has a pedagogy. It is the pedagogy that is the curriculum. That is, what teachers are able to do and what learners are able to learn. Within the ministry, uh, the section responsible for data collection has to be strengthened because the data we're getting globally on Nigeria now, it's data that's based on estimation. Partnership between government and the private sector was also identified as key to the growth of the sector. The partnership between employers and the school system the vocational, technical, university, and other system is there. Because no government can be aware of the rapid changes in the economy that are, that are constantly affecting us. What are the new jobs of tomorrow? Are we preparing people for jobs of tomorrow or jobs of yesterday? Are we preparing people for unemployment and being street kids? Or are we preparing them for employment? We need to begin to bring into the fold of advocacy for education or bringing people to the forefront of education, our traditional and religious leaders. Capitalize on the mothers, capitalize on the children, capitalize on the female teachers to make sure that we make a proper advocacy outcry on the importance of education and most importantly, long-term importance of education which these women or these communities completely lack. I think one thing 
that is important is the quality of the teachers we have. And uh, that quality has a whole lot to do with the output. Having listened with keen interest, the vice president assured the participants that the president will look into all the suggestions made. I will assure you that Mr. President and the council will look at all these recommendations and will implement them accordingly. And with those assurances, the summit was declared open. I am hopeful that this summit will provide us with practical solutions in these specific areas. Let me reiterate that accurate statistics on our school enrollment and other education indices, especially at the basic and secondary school levels, remain a very serious challenge. It is necessary that we get the number right to aid successful planning and decision making. As we look ahead to the future, we should be concerned about how to strengthen and sustain the success of our intervention efforts, how to improve community involvement in the management of institutions, how to replace incessant strikes with dialogue and negotiations, and how to encourage our youth and adults to develop and put their skills to good use through small and medium scale enterprises. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me reinstate our government commitment to due consideration and implementation of viable recommendations from this summit. Let me assure you that government will look at the recommendations of this summit favorably. On this note, it is now my pleasure to formally declare the 20th Nigeria Economic Summit open. I wish you all fruitful deliberations. Thank you and God bless you. There were seven plenaries and different designed workshops, all boiled down to finding solutions to the declining education sector. However, to help deepen our understanding of why and propose ideas on the purpose of a Nigerian education, this session had the former Minister of Education, Dr. Obie Ezekwesili, speak on what she tagged education for what purpose.
she advocated early child care education. The fastest way to do a catching up now is to make early child care education put it on the front burner of the education system. That the public sector and the private sector must work together in the kind of program we put together a program called the, um, the Vocational Enterprise Institutions. Dr. Victor Kuo from Singapore emphasized on character formation. For him, character first before competence. Character. Character first, then competencies. If you start with competency, you are in trouble. Because if you start by saying, I want the best ICT, IT man in this, my company, yes, he can do everything. He can do Oracle, he can do Microsoft, he can do Somersault, everything. <laughs> but if you're not careful, you're hiring a thief. Because when you're not looking, he's stealing. So character comes first. Then competency. And then thirdly, chemistry. Can he work with others? Other participants in this session also made their recommendations. We are graduating kids who cannot read and write. Why is that so? Because the people running the system are corrupt. There is no way you can deal with this question of education and access and equity without getting down to the question of corruption. Spend money on our children. Spend money on our citizens. Educate our people. Let us have outstanding men and women that can effectively grow the economy of Nigeria by spending on education. The third day of the summit featured a thought-provoking session by students. We are the representatives of this great nation, the student body. We want to air our views on how we want our future to be. We want to tell the people of Nigeria what Nigerian children want their future to look like. We want to let you know how we want our future to be. We don't want schools that are just academic institutions. We want schools that are inspiration centers, schools that, schools that when you graduate from, you will have something to show. You will have an impression that, yes, you have come out with something that will help you to boost the image of your country. They also advocated for safety and security. Learning is difficult if we feel unsafe at school. I believe the government can help protect schools so that we don't ever have to be afraid anymore to go to schools. Yeah. We lost some friends recently, and we believe the nation cannot recover from the loss. We need the government for security. For them, the future is bright but more encouragement is needed from the leaders. I see a future where both boys and girls are given equal opportunities to succeed. And education is made free up to high school for all Nigerian students. Even if at all governments want to charge fees, they should at least make student loans available at 0% interest and repayable between 20 to 30 years. The imperativeness of leadership to the development of the education sector was also brought to the fore in this session, leadership and ownership in Nigerian education. We can't boast of state-of-the-art of the government house, state-of-the-art bulletproof cars, and yet we leave our children under the trees. So it's all about leadership, it's about courage, it's about the good heart, and it's about conviction. In terms of leadership, we should start with the leader of the state. In our own case, with the governor of the state. A leader who does not have passion for education, who does not love education, who has not gone through education process, cannot lead well. And I also want you to know that education is central to everything. I'm from Ekiti State. That's the only industry we have. It is our oil. It is our gold. It is our diamond, and so we are putting everything into it. 
A case was also made for the corporate governance structure. I think if we have strong institutions that are well managed, that publish accounts, and disclose um, you know, all their practices, that you will have a better educational system. Governor Shomoli, however, took a swipe at the method of selection of the students that participated at the summit. It is not even fair, and we disturb the real picture, when we select students from very privileged federal government colleges. We are admission, admission, admission is a function not of merit, it's a function of connection, it's a function of the uncle, it's a function of minister's list, governor's list, etc. Meanwhile, in discussing the topic from bricks to mint, the centrality of education and learning to nation building and economic development, the former chairman, Goldman Sachs Asset Management, Mr. Jim O'Neill, said if Nigeria's population is properly harnessed, then it will be the 15th largest economy by 2050. At the end of the summit, now, a summary of the recommendations we are presented to the Vice to President. It was indeed a high-powered presentation from the three people. Can we appreciate them one more time, ladies and gentlemen? Some of the recommendations include the proposed government reforms. First, to reduce the number of parastatals in the Federal Ministry of Education and to allow greater autonomy for tertiary institutions. Also recommended was commitment from private sector to support public education through the establishment of set of early childhood resource centers, funding education projects where private sector brings profit, interest and competence to bear, and citizen-led assessment learning. We have received the report and uh, we are inviting the summit to formally make a presentation to the Federal Executive Council. Usually that's what we do. And then we will pick the recommendations and send them to the relevant MDAs for implementation. In all of these, 
Many, including international observers, are optimistic of a brighter future for Nigeria's education sector. I think there's a, a, a two-pronged approach. Uh, first, you need to fix what is broken, and secondly, you need to transform what is obsolete. Uh, the first one is to deal with the obvious problems like literacy issues in the country, uh, you have issues around teacher competencies. Uh, none of these are simple ones, they're massive problems, so I'm not trying to downplay it. But th they are rather simple to define and somewhat uh, you know, simple to address, not necessarily easily uh, attained in terms of solution. The second one is more difficult, which is to transform what is obsolete. And uh, this is a message that actually I bring to schools into countries around the world. Uh, the traditional educational system, the model, actually is an obsolete model. And no amount of improvement on obsolescence is going to change an obsolete model. And so we have to look at transforming a very complex system. And uh, you know, uh, the traditional system was designed for the industrial age to create workers for the workforce that would conform and comply and meet industrial age standards. In today's world, first of all, that world doesn't exist. The 1940s doesn't exist. And so now we have to start to think of what does the future hold for the young people, not the past. And uh, the skills of being innovative, to be creative, to be inventive, none of those skills are in the traditional model of education yet they're the ones that drive the future of education. I, I believe there is so tremendous hope. I, I come to Nigeria. I believe that Nigeria in the next five years could be a leader in the world in transforming education. And the reason I say that is because it's in such disarray today. Out of the ashes could rise something very, very beautiful. Uh, I go in, in, to United States or in Canada. I see less hope there because they're not in such desperate straits as they are in, in Nigeria. Uh, I believe that we can actually, in the next three to five years, create a prototype model of the future of education that literally would cause people from around the world to come here and to learn from Nigerians. It doesn't mean that the whole system would change, no. But we can create an example, maybe a thousand schools, where, where this new form of learning, the 21st century form of education, which we call profound learning, is actually evidence, uh, evident. And uh, from there, you create a tipping point. And it could take many, many years to change the entire system, but I think you can have a prototype working that can very powerfully demonstrate what is possible. And if the words of the Vice President are anything to go by, the Nigerian education sector may be on the path of resuscitation. <laughs>